Hey, what's up makers? Trevor here for Love Make Share. I am back in the shop once again with my 3D printer, which is still out of commission for a few different reasons. I'm not gonna spend too long on an intro this time because I wanna jump into it and get this thing working because I got projects to do that require it. Let's get to it. Okay, let's talk what I'm gonna do tonight very quickly. This is a stepper motor that uh, burnt out. I tried to adjust the potentiometer, uh, supplying current to it, and that went uh, poorly. Now that I have a working stepper motor installed, I need to go back under to the stepper motor driver to fix it. So. I had this guy, which is not nearly sensitive enough for me to see the, the numbers I need to see. This gets me down to a sensitivity of about uh, 10 volts, but really I need to be able to see less than a volt. So I ordered this off Amazon. Uh, it's a Neotech digital multimeter, which I'm pretty excited about actually. Um, it feels kind of cheap but it'll get me down to that kind of two volt range where I need to be. And the other thing that I like about it is this. It comes with two sets of probes. One of them is your standard multimeter probe, which looks like these guys. And then you have a second set, which are alligator clips, which is wonderful. And I'll show you why once we get under the printer. All right, so this is the side of 3D printers that people tend uh, not to talk about a whole lot. This is the main board. Uh, it's a big old Arduino, essentially, with a bunch of stuff tacked onto it. And along the side here, kind of there, there, and there, and there, these are the stepper motor drivers. So this is a little chipboard that controls the electricity going to the motor. Right here is a little potentiometer, so it's just a tiny little screw uh, that adjusts the voltage going to the motor. And right now I, I, I can't recall where I ended uh, the last time I was messing with this, if, uh, if it was way too hot or way too not, um, way too much voltage uh, versus way too little. What I need to do is take a reading to see how much power is going, and I need to dial it into about 0.9 volts according to the manufacturer's spec. And I'm gonna read this um, by putting one probe kind of up here, and then another probe, I'm gonna attach it to the screwdriver and use essentially use the screwdriver uh, as a probe here. So that's where the alligator clip on the multimeter comes in. All right, let's see, moment of truth. Let's see if this works. not getting I suspect I might be doing something wrong here yeah I'm not getting anything all right I figured out what I was doing wrong and what I was doing wrong was on here uh, there's a button here that says hold and if you press it it stops it from taking a reading which is a totally I'm sure it's not useless I just don't know what the use case for that feature is uh, but it really messed me up so let's see what I've got here. Uh oh, yeah. Okay, I'm getting close. 0 0.6, 0 0.7. There we go, 0 0.9. <sighs> Surprisingly nerve wracking for such a simple thing to do. All right, so good news is I have the voltage dialed in on the potentiometer, I think. Next, I wanna see if this uh, is gonna move on the y-axis as it's supposed to. I will say right now, this uh, none of this is super well aligned. It's it's difficult to move, that's not bad, but it's, it's difficult to move the y-axis by hand, so I'm also gonna need to align this rod. It needs to be parallel with the rods on the sides, and right now it's just not. Um, but for the moment, why don't we see if it'll try and move at all? So I'm connected, I've connected the printer with uh, Repetier on my surface, so I'm gonna flip over to manual control, and I'm just gonna see. Oh, damn. That's better. 
That's, ah, oh, that's so much better. That's not great. But you know what that is? That's, that's the motor moving and then it's catching because it's not parallel. But then, but then it moves nicely and quietly. That motor, the new motor is a lot quieter than the old motors. I very nearly bought five motors and replaced a whole pile of them. And the nice thing is, is that when I had this overvolted, this motor got really hot really quickly. And right now it is very cool to the touch. Sweet, all right, first fix done. So the shop is an unholy mess right now. So I am uh, I'm trying to do all of these things without producing a whole lot more mess. But let's, let's take a second and look at what it is that I'm gonna be doing here. So here is my 3D printer from the top down. There are four rods that go like this. And they're stationary, they're set, okay? And then I have a rod that goes like this, and a rod that goes like this, that carry this block that has uh, the print heads and the fans and all that good stuff. Now the problem is, this line has to be parallel with this line over here. But right now, they're not. Uh, this one is more or less okay. I still kind of want to fix it up a little bit because it feels like there's a bit of a catch, but I need to get this and this parallel. The instructions basically say, take your calipers, put out the depth gauge to a known distance, uh, and then make sure uh, multiple points along the way that this is the measurement that, that you get uh, and, and make sure that like measuring between here and here, it's the same all the way down. Um, the internet seems to think that this is a, a dumb and bad way of doing this and that a simpler way is just to take um, a piece of something that can sit across both rods with a, a consistent distance in the middle. So something kind of shaped like this from the side that can sit on this rod and this rod and then you, you kind of cinch them together all the way down and just do that for the entire length and then the entire length above and below the block. I think I'm gonna do that. Now, there are 3D models that you can print of this. My printer is not calibrated enough right now to even do that. I need to get a little bit creative and come up with something that is this from something I have lying around. And I wanna do a quick because um, I'm getting impatient to try this printer out again. All right, uh, a few seconds of rummaging around and I have found this little piece of board and uh, this pack of X-Acto blades. And you know what, I, I think this will probably do it. Why do I need to get fancy with it? I don't. Okay, so here it is. There it is. This is dumb. Uh, but I suspect this is gonna be one of those cases where dumb is just fine. Oh, I need to do this at quite an angle, it turns out. There's one side. So I felt that shift a bit. Hopefully that's enough. Let's find out. Huh. Interesting. Now nothing's working. That's real bad. Hmm. Okay, so I've I've done a little bit of alignment, but I'm starting to think that there has to be something else going on here. Because like this is fine now. This this moves beautifully, but this is still really flippin' hard to move. 
I'm not entirely sure what's doing that. It's just, it's too tight. Somewhere. Somehow. And I'm wondering where the added tension is coming from. So here's what I'm thinking. Separate has a little belt, which attaches to a gear, which attaches to this this other drive belt here. So the belt that comes off the stepper is, I would say probably 50% tighter than the x-axis one. So I'm gonna go ahead and loosen this up a little bit and then try it again. Wow. All right, so that's a little looser. Let's do a little experiment. This feels a lot better. Let's get it tightened down again. And we'll... There's a combination of over tightening this, uh, the belt coming off the stepper motor, and I think, I think also the end cap here. Hey, that's better. Ah. Oh. That's better. Look at that. Let's try this. Uh oh. Uh. But that's better. Yes. That felt good. That feels good. That feels bad. Why? Okay, so I think I see what's going on here. This is both tricky to focus on and see from here, but this gear wheel right here that I'm touching, uh, a screw has worked its way out of it. So the alignment is now fine, but the problem is without the screw to hold it in place, whoa, look, there we go. This is just moving, this gear wheel is just moving totally freely on the rod, which means that it's not contributing any strength. It's not, uh, it's not, it's not actually pulling the belt. It's just kind of sitting there. So, um, fortunately I managed to find one of the teeny tiny little screws. I'm going to try and sink it in there and, uh, hopefully that solves my problem. All right, Maker, so it's a couple days later and I'm considering my options. All right, let's do a quick inventory of uh, what we've learned. Voltage going to the stepper motor was wrong, now is fine. Great. Second problem, misaligned rods. Corrected, fine, great, two for two. Third problem, missing a set screw in one pulley. Unfortunately, there are no threads left to screw a new set screw in a place, so the pulley rotates freely around the rod, uh, which means that there is absolutely no strength going to it. Rod moves, pulley doesn't move, belt doesn't move, print head doesn't move. So as of now, the x-axis, uh, all in all, given how little I knew about what was actually going wrong with the printer when I got into this, uh, I think two out of three is okay. And, and like, given that the third problem is totally outside of my control, I'm not gonna feel too bad about it. The local electronic shop that uh, has traditionally been able to get parts brought in for this Velman, uh, they can't do it. Velman apparently doesn't provide this particular part anymore unless it's part of a repair. So the US store site does not carry the part. The UK store site does, uh, and there are a couple of other options. I can either purchase it from a UK distributor uh, and I guess get it forwarded over, which is inconvenient, logistically a pain and expensive. The main problem is the pulley that is missing the set screw now. It's it's all sorts of non-standard. Pulleys around this size tend to have 20 teeth and these ones have 19 for some reason. So what I'm kind of thinking right now is that I'll just replace all the pulleys with slightly more standard ones, feed the new number of teeth on the pulleys into the calculator that Prusa provides and then plug those numbers uh, that it spits out into the steps per millimeter settings uh, in the firmware. It's not a convenient fix, but it seems more convenient and cheaper and kind of more interesting than the alternative. And right now, 
as much as I just want the printer to be up and running as efficiently as possible, I'm kind of liking the idea of doing something dumb and creative to fix it as well. This is where I start getting into trouble because the fix becomes as interesting to me as the actual thing I'm trying to fix. I don't know, anyway, hey, uh, if you watch this, I, I hope you got some insight as to how maybe you can go about exploring and diagnosing and fixing some printer problems. If you have a Velman Vertex and you've experienced any of this nonsense, uh, let me know in the comments because I would love to hear how you resolve some of it. Or if you have a similarly finicky printer, uh, I would love to hear your war stories in the comments below, so let me know. Hey, uh, once again, everybody, thank you so much for watching Love Make Share. Uh, hit, hit like, share, subscribe, all that good stuff. Hit the bell, I guess that's still a thing. Anyway, that's it for me. I hope you liked it. I hope you've been inspired. Go make something.